Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new mini PC from Menace Forum known as the UM350. So this is basically Menace Forum's cheapest offering when it comes to a Ryzen powered mini PC and we definitely take a look at a lot of Ryzen powered mini PCs on the channel. One of my favorite things to review. We've seen them go for $400 up to $1,100, but this one here in its bare bones form factor is $270 from Minus Forum right now. So it is their cheapest offering when it comes to these Ryzen chips. Along with the bare bones model that they're offering on their website, they also have a fully configured model with AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, up to 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. And along with the mini PC, inside of the box, you're also going to receive a 65 watt power supply, a 6 foot HDMI cable, and a 6 foot DisplayPort cable. We've also got the option to add a 2.5 inch drive inside of the unit so we get some accessories for that, some mounting hardware, and a vase mount so we can mount this up on the back of our monitor, bottom of the desk, or a wall. It really depends on what you want to do with it. Now getting inside of this mini PC is actually really easy. They got a little spring mechanism here. You're just going to push down on it. We can pull the top off and then we have access to the internals, the RAM and the storage. It uses dual channel SODIMM RAM and I can get this up to 3000 megahertz in this. It also has a single M.2 SSD slot. If you did want to add a 2.5 inch SSD, mounts right here in the top half of the case. So they do make it really easy to upgrade the RAM and the storage in this little PC. As for I.O., up front here we have a Gen 2 USB Type-C port. The yellow port here is actually USB 3.0 Gen 1. They've also included an extra Gen 2 3.0 port up front here. And around back we have two more USB 3.0 ports, full-size HDMI, full-size display port, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, and our power in. When it comes to the specs of the UN350 for the CPU, we have the Ryzen 5 3550H, 4 cores, 8 threads with a base clock of 2.1 GHz and a boost up to 3.7. We've also got built-in Radeon Vega 8 graphics at 1200 MHz. It supports up to 32GB of DDR4 SODIMM RAM running it up to 3000 MHz with a little bit of tweaking in the BIOS. And this little machine is capable of running Windows or Linux, but for this video we've got Windows 10 Pro installed on it, and I kind of want to jump right into some testing on this thing. Alright, so here we are, I've got a 32 inch 4K monitor attached, and as you can see the monitor absolutely dwarfs this little PC. I've got everything up to date, I've installed some games, some benchmarks, and some emulators that we're going to be testing out in this video, but so far everything's been working great with the UM350. Haven't run into any issues, no overheating or anything like that. By the way, out of the box, this CPU is actually set at 35 watts, which seems to kind of be the sweet spot for this little chip here and the cooler they're using. Now it is possible to up the TDP, you can go up to 50 watts on this little chip, but the cooler here just isn't going to handle 50 watts, so 35 is definitely where it's at with this mini PC. But as for everyday desktop use, email checking, web browsing, video playback, this thing handles it just fine. You want to do some 1080p video editing, you're not going to be able to do 16 streams of 4K on this, but if you got some simple videos that you need to edit, or even photo editing, the 3550H will handle it. And as for noise out of the built-in fan, under normal use, even set at this 35 watt TDP, you can barely hear it. And while gaming, it doesn't sound like a jet engine or anything like that, but when I did go to 50 watts on this thing, it went to 100% and it can get quite loud. But out of the box, the way it's set up right now, the fan curve is really nice. So taking a quick look at some 4K video playback, I've actually set the monitor up for 4K with no scaling, so I know it's a bit hard to see Stats for Nerds up in the top left hand corner, but we have a YouTube video at 60 FPS 4K, and it's trucking right through. We did get a couple drop frames on the initial load in, but it's not bad at all. I mean, for what we have here, this will handle 4K just fine. I'll get a bit closer here. As you can see, so far we've got four drop frames, and by the end of this, we only had seven drop frames. So yeah, not bad at all. So the next thing I want to take a look at are a couple benchmarks, and first on the list we have Geekbench 5. Single core, 900, multi, 3444. Now, I was actually expecting a little more out of the single, but then I got to thinking, I mean, it's a third gen Ryzen APU. We're not going to get the kind of scores we see out of the 5000 series APUs. 6270, and this is just a Vulkan benchmark for that built-in Vega 8 GPU. And the final one here is 3D Mark Night Raid with a total score of 10,754. 
Remember, these built-in Radeon Vega 8 graphics are only running at 1200 megahertz, and the RAM is at 3000 megahertz right now. But we still need to see how this thing can handle some real-world PC gaming. And first up, we have CSGO. 1080p medium settings, actually doing a pretty decent job here. I expected it to. Very well optimized game, been on the market for a while, and with these Radeon GPUs, I've actually had really good luck, especially if we have a decent CPU here. By the end of this match, we had an average of 92 FPS. Moving over to the Art of Rally, 1080p medium settings, we average 108 FPS like this, and I'm sure we could go up to high settings and kind of just turn V-Sync on. I know it's not a top-the-line AAA game, but it's still lots of fun and it works very well on this mini PC. Moving over to the original Skyrim, one I always like to test with these mini PCs. 1080p medium settings, we're getting a steady 60, and to tell you the truth, I probably should have went back and just turned some of these up to high because I'm pretty sure it's going to handle it just fine. And the final game I wanted to test was Forza Horizon 5. Right now, we're at 720p low settings with the resolution scale set to balance. We're getting over 60 here, and if I turn V-Sync on, we can run it at a constant 60 with these settings, but there's a lot of people out there that just don't want to run these games at 720p. I completely understand. So I wanted to see how well it would run at 1080p, and I was positive we weren't going to get 60 at 1080p on low settings. So what I did was turn V-Sync on, and from the settings, I just turned it to 30 FPS. And I know a lot of people out there do want to run this at 60, but it is possible to run this at 1080p, low-medium settings, 30 FPS on this mini PC. Now it's time to check out some emulation, and first up we have PS2 using PC SX2, 1080p, DirectX 11 back in. And initially, I was using the development version of PCSX2 with that new Vulkan support, but it wasn't doing well on this little chip. So I just swapped back over to DirectX 11, and we can run a lot of these games at 1080p. I'm sure some of them may need to be dropped down to 720, but it does handle PS2 quite well. Moving over to PSP using PPSSPP, 6x resolution, Vulkan back in, and yes, this will do Chains of Olympus just fine, but we do need to drop that down to 3. But for a lot of the stuff for PSP, we can go up to 6x, and some of the games that run at 30, you can run them at 10x on this machine. And finally, we've got some GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. DirectX 11 back in, 1080p, F0GX on this fire level, which just really takes a toll on the CPU and GPU with lower end chips, but we're at a constant 60 here, and when it comes to Wii games, I also tested Sonic Colors and Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, it'll also run it at 60 FPS with that DirectX 11 back in. When it comes to total system power consumption, I always measure this using a kilowatt meter from the wall. At idle, the UM350 pulls 12 watts. While gaming, we averaged 36, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall while maxing out the CPU and GPU was 68 watts. And just for reference, while doing 4K video playback, it pulls 16 watts. So in the end, it's a capable little mini PC. It's not as powerful as the 4000 or the 5000 series mini Ryzen PCs that we've been taking a look at on the channel, but this is a lot less expensive. Like I mentioned, those range from, you know, $500 up to $1100. This is coming in bare bones at $260, and it does a great job at emulation. You got some light gaming going on here. The older titles are going to work just fine. If you want to do some source stuff like Half-Life 2, Left 4 Dead 2, and titles like that, they work just fine. As you saw, Skyrim and CSGO work really well, and if you don't mind playing at 720p, you can even do some AAA games on this machine. Emulation is great. We've got PS2, Dreamcast, GameCube, Wii. This really isn't going to handle PS3. I'm sure there's a few games that might work with it, but this being a 3000 series Ryzen APU with four cores and eight threads, I wouldn't count on PS3 with this. But 4K video playback, you want to use this as your basic desktop for email checking, web browsing, 4K video playback, 
This will even do some 1080p video editing and photo editing just fine. We do have plenty of power with this little chip. But in the end, it's always up to you. If you're interested in learning more, maybe picking one of the UM350s up, I will leave some links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.